Hi, my name is Scott Watson. I'm director of the Belkin Art Gallery. And I'm going to attempt to give a video tour of our exhibition of the photography and film work of David Warnerovich. This is an exhibition that was organized by Kunstwerke in Berlin and curated by Chris Goitesen. We're going to start with this image. It's kind of the opening image of the show. And it's an image that uh, the artist uh, presented of himself with a text about what it was like to grow up and find out you're gay in America in the 1980s. Uh, it's a strong and harrowing text about how uh, once you in that era realize you're gay, you'll be up against the uh, hostility of the state and religion and maybe your own parents. Um, the exhibition is about, um, it's really centered on the artist's response to the AIDS crisis in America in the late 1980s. The artist himself was gay, and in the late 80s, he and, he and many of his friends, of course, were diagnosed with AIDS, and he knew he was going to die. So most of the work in this show is about this. It's about uh, his response to having AIDS and his acting out how that should be a political response, how um, there was something wrong with the way the state worked in response to this crisis. It's interesting that we should be doing this tour now when there's another pandemic and there's a different kind of response. Um, let's just move on. Uh, another image from the late 80s of a performance piece that the artist did called Silence Equals Death. This was a famous kind of motto uh, put out by the um, activist group called ACT UP, many posters, and this was his response in which he sewed his mouth shut. So it's an uh, endurance, uh, in inflicting a pain and making a powerful image uh, about the cost of silence. We can't deal with every image. There's hundreds of images in this show, but I wanted to sort of start with the political tone of the show. And this is a long text about um, the uh, court finding that gay people did not actually have constitutional rights, which came down in the late 80s in the United States. Um, but let's move into the far gallery now. Our exhibition really starts here as well with a, a film made by uh, David Warner, which is collaborator Marion Skamama. She made this film in 2018, and the core of it is an interview uh, with David that was conducted by Sylvia Lautringer uh, in the two years before uh, David died. And it's interviews with him and snippets of films that David made or they made together. So it's, uh, it's about an hour long. It gives a really uh, kind of rich, detailed portrait and is uh, kind of our didactic center, although it's also a work of art. In this opening section, we also have um, uh, quite a rare item. In the late 70s, David was going to issue a box of postcards, and these are the maquettes for them. He never did edition this, but they're interesting, and then they show various things that will concern him for the next uh, 12 years as he works as an artist. Um, his interest in the work of William Burroughs, his interest in the work of uh, uh, the Onde. Oh, Not just the work, but everything that the figure of the French poet Arthur Rimbaud represents. Um, there's a small image of a burning house here, and which becomes a very strong image, an important image for David as a symbol of um, maybe the society on fire due to an epidemic crisis. Also, he's interested in Mexico, where he went several times, and his interest in um, ritual and death, to put it bluntly.
Okay, uh, we're in uh, one of the first sections of our big gallery. Uh, we made an installation that's very immersive. There's a lot of moving images, some projected, some on small monitors. Uh, there's sound coming from the main piece in the other room, which I'll talk about in a minute. And the idea was to create something that was a bit of an environment, that was a bit immersive, to maybe create a, some of the feeling around the work. Uh, there's a lot of photographs in this show, so we built a mezzanine to hold most of the photographs. And the mezzanine is made out of construction scaffolding and maybe gives a feeling of the kind of marginal city areas like New York's piers where you might expect to find maybe illicit sexual activity. This piece is called When I Put My Hands on Your Body, and the uh, main model is the artist himself. Uh, the relationship to the photographer Peter Hujar was extremely important to David as his development as an artist. Uh, Peter was a well-known uh, photographer based on the Lower East Side of New York. He was uh, considerably older than uh, David, when they met, uh, he was an extremely uh, handsome and interesting man, uh, and he really helped David uh, come into his own as an artist. David had had a fairly rough background, which comes through in the show. He had been rejected by his family when he was a teenager for being gay, and had worked uh, as a teenager and young adult as a sex worker. So he came to New York as a street kid, basically and went from, when he found the art, artist milieu, he really blossomed as an artist. And Peter was his mentor. And so these are uh, pictures of Peter on his deathbed. Um, these are pictures of David by Peter Hujar. Pictures of David in New York by his friend Andreas Sturzing. The exhibition has open spaces, but maybe maybe closed, more confined spaces to look at work. So we'll go down here. Um, there's a photograph of David by Peter Hujar, holding a snake. Uh, a theme that comes through the exhibition is David's fondness and rapport with animals, especially ants and frogs and snakes and scorpions. Um, under here is a slideshow, again by Andreas Sturzing, of um, New York, uh, the piers, and other spaces where graffiti was, was being put on walls. David was part of the graffiti movement in the 80s, uh, leaving gra drawings of cows and James Dean or Rambo in other places in the urban environment. So an image like this, for example, is kind of an image of an imaginary utopian kind of sexual freedom in a derelict space. Um, it's kind of a so in this guy we were projecting quite large the uh, the major uh, film that David completed, I say completed, although there is no soundtrack, and one would imagine that he would have made a soundtrack. And there are two versions. We show them both, and it's called Fire in My Belly. And it's a very strong, uh, surrealist influenced, I think, uh, series of juxtaposed images, most of which David himself took uh, from uh, trips he took um, mainly to Mexico and a few found images. 
and his major themes are made visible in the film. Um, animals, ritual, death. Uh, behind you all, and if you want to turn around, would be a really a good example of the kind of graffiti art that David was putting in these spaces in the 80s. Uh, and it, even the way that imagery was played with in a kind of sexual way in these spaces. Just wanted to, this is an image from a protest uh, against Ronald Reagan whose policies were detrimental to uh, people with AIDS. Okay, this installation is the centerpiece of the exhibition. It's a piece called It's So FOMO and the Shadow of Forward Motion. It's a four channel uh, video projection and with it a soundtrack of a composition made by Ben Neal and others. And it's really not, it was not made as a gallery piece. It was a performance piece and they would play this score, which you can hear, and David would read and perform in front of this. Um, in 2018, it was transferred to digital. Uh, the musicians had an old recording which was remastered and they have a tape of David reading. So the performance is kind of reconstructed in the absence of the performer. Uh, but it's one of uh, David's most powerful pieces and again, collages his uh, repertoire of images uh, having to do with sex, uh, violence, animal life, uh, explosion, scientific exploration, all these things that, that concerned him uh, are brought together in kind of an uh, aggressive kaleidoscope, if I could put it that way. We can wrap up by talking about the, a few of the photographs on our improvised mezzanine. There's a lot of images in the show, uh, about 160 of them. So we can only talk about a few. Um, this is a, became quite a famous image, uh, referring to the AIDS crisis and making an analogy between the AIDS crisis and the extermination of the buffalo. One of the earliest uh, works in the show is this work from 1979, really at the beginning of uh, David's practice as an artist, but a piece that made him fairly well known, in which he took the uh, famous photograph of Arthur Rambeau, which is on the book cover designed by Ray Johnson, by the way, um, and had friends uh, pose with this photographic mask in various places in New York um, as kind of a performance piece uh, around inserting a mythology of rebellion and outsiderness into the city in which Peter, I mean, in which David was living now. David's obviously not the photographer. He's in the photograph, but he had it made for him and showing him buried uh, an image of, uh, of death. So you see these are still big still images, but you see some of these as moving images in the films that David made, but a series of um, images of toys or crucifixes or um, soft corn models or guns or other things uh, covered with ants. And um, I don't want to hazard an interpretation except that the ants are kind of um, 
both creepy, because uh, they, they maybe they indicate decay, like they're taking something apart, but they're also kind of uh, lively. They're like a force of life. So they're ambiguous images. Uh, wanted to maybe end on this set, because they really feature the, some, the uh, very personal side of this work, which is uh, the artists continue working with these little props, these little toys, uh, which obviously had a great meaning to him uh, that bound together, I guess, his own childhood with the urgent kind of crises that he lived through.